when we are now thinking about more specific use cases, we have to ask uh, what makes uh, an application scenario really a potential run X use case. Well, the first thing is we are deploying multimedia assets on the web. Because if we just have them in a closed application, then we don't have the problem because it's that application dealing with the, with the media asset and the metadata. In addition, we publish metadata that describes this asset uh, and we publish it uh, in a format that's not purely textual and in a format that's not already RDF. Because if it's already RDF, then we have interoperability with the semantic web and there is, is no other problem to solve. But typically, when you have media assets, you have metadata in a specific format and you want to publish it in that format. And, of course, there must be some need that a semantic web agent uses this metadata. If it's only for humans, then uh, text will, will be a fine solution. But if you want a semantic web agent to use it, it has to be in a form that this agent can understand. So, one use case is photo sharing. It's, pop it's probably one of the most popular uh, Web 2.0 applications around. And as you know, uh, digital images have exif information embedded. It's all kind of uh, when the picture was taken, all the settings of the camera and so on. And some photo sharing sites, have, as example I've taken here Flickr and Pbase, they use this information and they display it. And what you see is the rendered HTML on these sites. So this is the Flickr one and this is the Pbase one. And you see they are quite different in formatting and, and they display different properties. So, what if you want to use that? The exit metadata in the image is actually standardized. But if you, as you've seen, the photo sharing site publishes it in, in different ways. So it's not easy to have interoperability using exit information from different sites. Another application is shopping for music online. Um, <coughs> there are a number of those uh, portals and they're uh, increasingly uh, getting market share of, of music sales and this is for example iTunes and you see this is the metadata dialogue and actually it's quite poor I have, a, I have the title, I have the internet and I have the, the console and of course I have the length which is not a really really amazing kind of metadata because it's very simple to get but I don't get much more metadata about it uh, on the other hand uh, metadata for music are available and there are quite common formats for that, like IP3, which is embedded in, in MP3 files. And on the other hand, there's also comprehensive music databases around, like Music Brains, which even allows you to get the metadata in a proprietary XML, but also in REF. Uh, so it would be good to link these things, because then I could get much more information about the music I can buy online. So you could link artist information, reviews about uh, music recommendations and so on. Uh, if you were able to get the metadata of the music store in a way that's compatible with the semantic web. Um, a more interesting use case is describing video structure because now we are talking about much more complex metadata than just that global description of title and, and artist and so on. So for example the NBA publishes uh, short summaries of NBA games uh, on YouTube. There is a specific YouTube channel for that. And you see a screenshot of that. And actually the, the metadata is, is quite poor. It tells you uh, to, to visit mba.com uh, video for more highlights and, and just gives you very, very little uh, description of what's happening there. And the tags with NBA and highlights are also quite poor. On the other hand, uh, when you look at, the, at, at everything that's inserted in that summary, as, as a text overlay, you see that there is a lot of information. There is the, the game time, there is the score, uh, and so on. And also there is a lot of uh, sites around that publish statistics uh, about basketball games. So there is a lot of metadata in specific formats. Uh, so it would be interesting to describe the structure of that video, describing separate scenes, describing the players there, so that you could link it uh, with that statistical information, describing game statistics, uh, which would allow you, for example, to access scenes in which a certain player uh, can be seen or, or in which a certain team scores. Uh, 
And one interesting point there that might lead to future future extension of RAMX is um, that there is, can be a lot of metadata if you really have a dense description of the video. So it would maybe for a long video be nice to have a kind of streaming approach to just get the metadata for the current section you're watching, but not for all of the video at once. Um, these, these were kind of uh, use cases targeted at the consumer. If we look in a more professional environment, uh, professional content providers uh, are selling their content for, for business to business purposes. An example is BBC Motion Gallery, where you can buy <coughs> stock video clips for reuse. Um, and you see that they have a lot of metadata published with that, they have a lot of tags, but it's kind of unstructured in the way they publish it. On the other hand, they have very well structured databases in house. For example, SMEF is the, the BBC archive uh, database format, or their, their data model. And there's also EBU Meta, which is used as professional format for business-to-business uh, -business exchange between broadcasters. So there is much more metadata in a much more structured format than just rendering HTML here. And this could be useful uh, for, a, for a potential customer of this application to get more information and link it with information available somewhere else on the web. Um, Related to this is, of course, uh, rights metadata. In, uh, as soon as you're talking about selling professional content, this is, is a very, very crucial thing. So in some cases, it's simple. Uh, this is an example for, from Flickr uh, that uses a specific Creative Commons license. So just providing uh, that link, uh, so this, this URI describes the license model because I have the URI, it specifies this Creative Commons license so this is quite well defined. Uh, another example is from Getty Images. So uh, when you look at, at images you can buy from them, uh, you can open a window that shows you uh, the rights information. So what you get is a kind of license agreement. And you see from the position of the scroll bar, this is just a small snippet of it. So you can spend one or two hours probably analyzing that text. Um, this is not only uh, very tedious and boring task for a human, but it makes it impossible to automatically search, for example, for images that are covered by a certain license or that allow you to do uh, certain things with the image you want to buy. So there are metadata formats for digital rights information, such as the MBIT21 rights expression language. So if you publish uh, the metadata in that way, uh, this would potentially allow uh, an agent to link it with other information on the web and do a search that also includes metadata. So this was a kind of overview of, of different use cases and what we've tried to do is to abstract the requirements that come from these use cases. So it shall be possible uh, when we publish media assets on the web to use existing multimedia metadata formats to describe them and not only to describe something uh, on, the, on the granularity of a complete HTML page but also uh, different elements in it. For example, one certain image uh, that is embedded in that page and the resulting description shall be consumable by a semantic web page. Um, in order to make that work there should be a reference to some service that is capable to convert the me a multimedia metadata format X to RDF so that a semantic web agent gets something it can use. Um, there may be several descriptions for one media asset. For example, if we look at the digital image, there could, for example, be the exit uh, information that's just extracted from the image header containing technical metadata, but in addition, there might be rights description. So they could be in different formats, and they are several descriptions of the same asset covering different aspects. In addition, there could also be different ways of formalizing a certain multimedia metadata format uh, and uh, represented in RDF. For example, if you think of MPEG-7, there are several approaches of how to map MPEG-7 uh, to RDF.